Hola, compañeros. Welcome. Hola. It's Hola. Que tal? Como esta? Uh, I'm Jay Jennings, and here to my right. Fernando Betts. Fernando Betts sitting in for Tom. And this is our special Once in Upon a Time in Spaghetti Westerns podcast dedicated to the Spaghetti Western films of Fernando Sancho. Please uh, pull up a chair, a couple six-packs, maybe a pizza, because we're going to be here for a while, right, Tom? That's right, at least three hours. <laughs> we'll see what happens, folks. So pull up a chair and then Scully to say, and spend your Friday with us. It's getting scratchy already. Did any of that opening come out? Yeah. It just started getting <laughs> Let's start from the beginning. Oh, a copy in yet? No, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, in Facebook and YouTube land, welcome to the show. We have a special surprise. Uh, no. <laughs> no, he's not here. I'm sorry. I got carried away. Anyway, we do have a special guest. It's Fernando Betts, um, and he'll be here for the show talking about his great, is it great uncle, Tom? I mean, My great uncle, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here we go. This is a terrible improv opening, but welcome to the show, and we'll be back right after our special opening, Tom. I did it just for you. Stole my hat. <laughs> <laughs> Should we keep that as the new opening? <laughs> that looks great. That was great. So that was a special intro I put together just minutes before the show. I never sleep, Tom, as yeah. as you well know. For those of you who have no clue who I am after nine weeks, I'm Jay Jennings, poster collector, film collector. I've written a couple books outside of the genre. And of course, we all know the one and only Tom Betts. Tom, what have you been up to uh, these days? Working on Fernando Sancho for two weeks. Wow. Are you ready? Thank God we had Brett Halsey in here for a week to give us a break. Right. No, we want to thank the great Brett Halsey, who was uh, here last week. Uh, Johnny Ringo himself gave a, gave a great performance. He's always on. Uh, we we like to thank him and, of course, uh, Robert Woods, who was on, I think, a couple months back. Yeah, three th episode three already. Yeah. Wow, Tom, know, Tom knows the episodes, everybody. So anyway, let's get our logo up there. And uh, a special show, which we will be celebrating the Spaghetti Western fil <clears throat> films only. I know we did uh, Brett Halsley's entire career, which I enjoyed, because he really doesn't, doesn't talk about much of that. But uh, Fernando uh, Sancho is here. He's right next to me. Say hello. Hey, Jay. <laughs> so... Um, I just, this is such a great show, basically nine, nine weeks in the making, Tom always discussed. We thought we'd open in the, our podcast with this. Could you imagine uh, two hours of Fernando Sancho as our first uh, I, I didn't realize how many films he made until I started taking them down. It was like near 50. Oh, at uh, least. Just, just, just spaghetti westerns, you know. Well, we know we're not even five minutes in and we haven't gotten to the first film yet. Yeah. That's how much... <laughs> that I, I yap too much, but that's part of the show, folks. We make it entertaining. Uh, just a quick shout out to all of you out there in Facebook and YouTube land. Thanks for tuning in live. And for those of you who will be watching later. So let's cut right to the chase, Tom. We've got some special uh, montages and a trailer uh, because this is gonna be a long one. And mm -hmm. uh, just kidding, it's the show's over. Good night. Yeah, we just okay. mentioned his name and everybody knows. Right, then we'll just uh, say, we'll just turn off the lights. Now, I'll the get first into it. I'll get Go into ahead. his bio. Okay, well, let's yeah. do his bio first, Tom. Okay. Fernando Sancho Les was born in Zaragoza, Aragon, Spain, on January 7, 1916. He was the brother of Emilio Sancho, who died in 1967. He started his acting 
in the theater under the direction of his brother. He then fought for Cruzada Nacional de Liberación as a combatant in Ejercito Nacional with the rank of lieutenant in the Spanish Legion. During his film career, he was almost always typecast as a Mexican bandit in the Spaghetti Westerns, but he also appeared in a number of Spanish horror movies in the 1960s and 70s. One of his better-known horror parts was the role of the corrupt small-town mayor in Return of the Blind Dead, 1973, directed by Armando de Osario. And another notable horror film was Orloff and the Invisible Man in 1971, directed by Pierre Chevalier and starring Howard Vernon. Fernando turned up briefly in the epic film Lawrence of Arabia, 1962, playing the Turkey sergeant who arrests T.E. Lawrence in Dara, and again in 1963's 55 Days at Peking with Charlton Heston and Ava Gardner. Here's a nod to my friends Spiros and Mario Polychronos. Fernando could speak some Greek, and it's thought that possibly his mother was Greek, so he appeared in five Greek war movies, 1970 to 73. Three of these involved World War II, such as Battle of Crete, Greek Resistance, Fort Rupel, and the other two involved the Greek War of Independence and Resistance of the Soliotes against Ali Pasha. In all, Fernando Sancho appeared in over 240 films and TV appearances from 1941 to 1991. He also dubbed a few films early in his career. Fernando was married to actress Mate Pardo, 1956 to 1990, and was the father of two children, Fernando Sancho Jr. and Metita Sancho. While filming La Luna Negra in 1989 with Mario Adorf, Sancho was ill during the production and was thought to have suffered a heart attack shortly after completing it. But in the hospital, a malignant tumor was found. He died as a result of the operation to remove the tumor on July 31, 1990, in Madrid, Spain. Fernando Sancho was a bigger-than-life figure who was loved by the movie fans of Spain and other end actors enjoyed working with him. He loved the bullfights and cigars and would take the American actors to the arenas if a bullfight was scheduled on a day off from filming. I've also heard he carried autographed photos of himself and passed them out to fans who recognized him on the streets of Madrid and other <laughs> towns when filming. Sounds would, like Fernando, doesn't I it? I wouldn't be surprised. Um, Sebastian Manuza asked before the show, who dubbed Fernando as the voice always seems to sound the same? Right. So I asked Roger Brown, who was the head of Rome Actors Dubbers Union, who dubbed Fernando on the English releases. And he said most likely it was Mel Wells, but possibly Steve Garrett early on. I'm not familiar with Steve Garrett, but Mel Wells is well known. To all of us, uh, as far Steve as Steve McGarrett from Hawaii Five O, maybe, yeah, okay. But that's what I've got as his bio. Great bio, Tom. Riveting as always. When Tom Betts talks, we all listen. And uh, the reason why I didn't show uh, you're wondering why I didn't show any posters is because we've got them all planned for the films. So if I would have that, that alone during Tom's uh, soliloquy, I could have shown them all. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm saving them for uh, for the show. So let's get to the um, the first, uh, I guess, uh, film that he Spaghetti Western that he made, Tom, and uh, that was where is it? Oh, Black, Black Angel, Angel of the Mississippi. Mississippi. Yep. There we go. Uh, several years after a bank robbery and execution of an innocent man who was found guilty, the real criminals are planning another attack under the leadership of Ray Torres, Howard Vernon. In the face of so many injustices, the peaceful people of the town request the bishop of the region to send a parish priest to reinstate the moral order. However, the white population does not count on is the fact that the new priest is black. Turns out the man who hanged him years ago is Padre Mur the man they hanged years ago is Padre Murray's father. Uh, Fernando Sancho plays the role of Garcia, an easygoing Mexican bandit who tells everybody he's very bad, so he won't be. <laughs> He won't walk into a pharmacy because they think he's poisoned. All right. Pa don't mess with Padre Murray. Uh, I haven't seen this film, Tom, one of the few Sancho that I haven't. Yeah, it's in black and white. I've only seen a part of it. Like I said, I don't remember if it was on uh, uh, Mexican TV here in Los Angeles or if it was on YouTube. But if it was on YouTube, I'd have stopped and watched the whole thing. Right. So I'm guessing it was on Spanish TV. Well, yeah, I, I think so. Maybe it was on KMEX or Channel 34. Yeah. When we, were, you know, when we were just kids in the 70s, Tom. <laughs> so, uh, okay, then he went on to make, uh, I guess, one of the Zorro movies, Tom. Yep, Zorro the Avenger. 
Uh, the legendary mask freedom fighter Zorro has retired after having killed a criminal in a battle between revolutionary Mexicans and the U.S. cavalry. Now he leads a quiet life in a small California town as wealthy Don Jose de la Torre. The dead man's brother Billy and a group of bandits swear revenge on Zorro. One of the bandits puts on Zorro's costume and terrorizes the countryside. After the gang murders Don Jose's best friend and kidnaps the woman he is about to marry, Zorro puts on the famous mask again to stop the criminals and restore his good name. Uh, Fernando plays the role of the sergeant. Later, this role is always called Sergeant Garcia. But he's Damn, like, Sergeant well, Garcia! Yeah, that's who he plays. Okay, a little ode to uh, Fernando there. Uh, our next film that he made was an early spaghetti western, Gunfight at High Noon. Yep. An outlaw murders the father of three young boys, and their mother swears vengeance. Years later, two of the boys set out to avenge their father's murder, while the third son becomes a federal marshal and tries to capture him lawfully. Sancho plays Pedro Ramirez, a lovable but loyal Mexican who helps two of the brothers. Uh, I guess we can guess which the two of the brothers are, the ones that want revenge. Did, but uh, does he play twin brothers, though? Uh, no. Okay. Because that, that would be the interesting, uh, also an early poster there. Was it yep. 62 or 3? 62 or 63. Yeah, 63. 63. Right. So I think uh, we'll move right along with the Implacable 3, Tom. Okay, the Implacable 3. Don Cesar Guzman, played by Jeffrey Horn, lives on a ranch with his pregnant wife, Ana Lupe, played by Rosa Del Rio. One night when she is alone, seven men try to rob the ranch. She recognizes the chief and he strangles her. When Caesar gets back home with the help of Silvera, called by Paul Piaget, and Diego Abrilis, which is Sancho, he seeks revenge for the death of his wife. Uh, Sancho's character is Diego Abrilis, a rival and best enemy of Silvera, played by Paul Piaget. He's quick to anger and rabid in the defense of his own honor. When he's not fighting, he's courting the saloon girl Lola, played by Christian Gaoni. Well, who wouldn't, right? Yeah, really. I mean, not, come here. <laughs> okay. typical, typical Fernando right uh, let's uh, move on to his next spaghetti western uh, let's see which one that is oh uh, that's Texas Jim also known as what Tom it's a good one Texas Jim I don't have that yeah Texas Jim it's shoot Texas Jim I'm sorry shoot to kill yes that's the an army lieutenant is sent to investigate horse thefts at a ranch but problems arise when he falls in love with the owner's daughter uh, Sancho just plays a Mexican named Poncho. So he a, he, yeah, he hasn't got that big of a role, more of a, a cameo early on. His name is either Poncho or Sancho. <laughs> Tom, you got to go in today, man. That's yeah, funny. Boy. So, anyway, no, it's a good film. It's actually, I like the poster. I have this one at home. Edmund Purdom, yeah. Yeah. So, our next uh, film that he made, and there's a lot, folks. I hope you got a pizza and a six pack. Uh, no matter what part of the world you're in, I'm here in Almeria. <laughs> Tom's at the other side of town, but he's the one covering the the 110 degree sun. Um, yeah, it straightened out my wrinkles on my backdrop here. Right, he finally got it ironed. <laughs> where I'm actually in the town. <laughs> yeah, right. Tom, you know, you don't know where Tom is. Guess where Tom is and win a win a cookie. Okay, so let's see what we got. His next film was oh, five thousand on one ace. I love that title. Yep. $5,000 on one ace. That's uh, Jeff Clayton, played by our friend Robert Woods, is a gunman who wins $5,000 in a poker game and also becomes co-owner of a ranch. A corrupt landowner tries to chase all small farmers from the valley. He also finds out he only owns half the ranch. This is uh, Jeff Clayton. As the children of the original owner uh, hire a lawyer who also wants part of the ranch to help them determine legality and ownership. Uh, Robert talked about this when we had him on episode three, where Sancho plays Juan Carancho, a rascal with a heart of gold, but still as, as trustworthy as a rattlesnake. Right. That's what he is. Uh, uh, next one, Tom, is another early spaghetti western, and I hope you're keeping tabs at home. This is number, what is it, six or seven or eight? I, d I didn't number them. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, that's the one thing Larry, I told you to do. I didn't number, number the episode. No, okay. Well, I'm just they're in Roman numerals, and I can't read Norman Roman numerals. Funny. Oh and next on the list is Gunman of the Rio Grande. Okay. Yep. 
That's uh, Guy Madison. Uh, Wider, played by Guy Madison, comes to the small border town of Rio Bravo to help Jenny Lee, a woman saloon owner, against the town villain and to save the, a mine owner from robbery. He's aided by a gang of Mexican outlaws who carry out his bidding. So, of course, we know who Sancho plays. Pancho Bogan, leader of the gang of Mexicans working for the tyrant, Zach the Snake Williams. What a surprise. Yep. That's a fun film. I, we've showcased this film in post and different incarnations. And uh, no, I just, I, when he's, I look for a poster that's got him in the corner in the upper right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With either a cigar in his mouth or his mouth is open. Uh, my favorite's the one, I think, for um, $10,000 for a massacre where it's uh, Garco and. Uh, oh, Camasso. Yeah, they're at the tree and he's just been right. shot. Yep. And they got that little duel going on, and there's uh, Fernando, like, <laughs> yeah, you know, like, it's like the in the right side of the of the poster. It's just he's he's he makes the poster no matter what poster he's in. Yeah, um, I think one of the favorites will be showing down there. He's he's like he's well, like one of the Pirates of the Caribbean pirates, and he's pointing a gun, and he's like this. It's like I I love posters like that. Those are That's the ones you look for, the ones in the bargain bin. It's another thing you can always tell Fernando. He always throws his pistol shots. He doesn't right. just bang, bang, bang. He throws them out of the gun. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily, I don't think he does that in Minnesota Clay, though, Tom, does no. he? Uh, Minnesota Clay is about an aging gunfighter, which who's uh, Cameron Mitchell, who is sentenced wrongly, manages to escape from prison. He then seeks out the one man who can prove his innocence and is caught thereby in a fight between two rival gangs. Because he is slowly going blind, he must make use of his enhanced sense of hearing. Sancho plays Dominique Ortiz Mendoza, a vicious Mexican bandit terrorizing the small Mexican or the Texas town. Wow, and it's one of Cam Mitchell's great spaghetti western roles. Yep. Should have won, should have got nominated for an Oscar, Tom. With a couple of different endings on that one, if you're not aware of it. Right. We won't give that away. Nope. Tom sometimes... Loves to have a, a sip of the soda and give a few secrets away. So <laughs> let's move on to the next one, Tom. And then we'll have a little montage uh, put together for uh, Fernando. It's uh, Seven from Texas. Seven from Texas. Bob Carey, paid, played by Paul Piaget, just released from prison, sets out in search of his fiance, and soon learns she has married a rich farmer. Couldn't wait for him. Her husband is trying to get her to the nearest large town so he can have an operation which may save her life. A group of men include Carrie and C Carrie Caravan take her to the, to the town. Sancho plays Scometti, or Apostaeus, a friend of Carrie's, uh, who goes along hoping to find some payoff for his help and friendship. Uh, his loyalty swings back and forth through the entire journey. Yeah. It's it's I I've seen it once I think uh, I, I, the reason is probably for Gloria Mil, uh, Milan. Yep. Only reason I, I watch any of her films are to see her, not really who else is in it. So let's take a look. Uh, as you know, I'm a sucker for those skirts, uh, barmaids and stuff like that. But anyway, who isn't? So let's uh, move right along, and uh, we have a little montage celebration of uh, Mr. Sancho, as I think what the first one's going to be. Uh, where is he? Looking for a little intro here. Ah, here we go. Here's a little ode to Fernando Sancho. I hope you enjoy it. Yeah, hmm. Brett Halsey told us last week that Fernando didn't speak much English, but he was a ball to work with. Oh, Always smiling and laughing and got along well with everybody. So. Oh, yeah, it's one of those actors. I mean, Bigger I mean, than life. Yeah, right, like a big teddy bear. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's move on to his films and uh, let's, you know, he's made a, Fernando made a share of, you know, not so good films, B movies, C films or low end comedies. But, you know, a lot of actors back then, it was just an uns unsaid thing, whatever, it paid the rent or it got you through. Say, yeah. Probably a fun, a fun, a good fun, fun paycheck. Right. A fun paycheck to go make yep. uh, beans, farts and, and, and beer. <laughs> yeah. Right, nothing you know, whatever, serious. Yep. Whatever the name of that film was, which I've yet to see, Tom. I know you'll enlighten us. Karate Fists and it. Beans? <laughs> <laughs> Karate Fists and Beans. It's on a list. Yeah, I, I, I missed that one. Tell me if that, that was a mistake. <laughs> so we'll move on to that one of those films that he made, Two Mafia Men in the Far West, Tom. I'm 
Was that made on the uh, on the outs right after The Godfather? Yeah, right. That's a early Franco and Ciccio made in Italy. Uh, Native Americans and outlaws make life, life difficult for two Sicilian cousins, Franco and Ciccio, after they inherit a gold mine in Texas. Sancho plays Rio, a Mexican outlaw who leads a gang trying to steal the mine from our heroes, but is finally done in by Indians who rescue Franco and Ciccio. There we go. The show would not be complete without showing that poster. There Tom. we go. Oh. God. It's, it's like a Don Knotts, uh, Dick Van Dyke movie out here somewhere. Yeah. Right? We'll, have to get, we'll have to get really drunk to do that show. <laughs> the whole show dedicated to <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. So anyway, let's uh, move on to uh, next film, which is another early spaghetti western, The Man, in front, the man from Canyon City. Right. That was the other... Robert Woods, Fernando Sancho pairing. Uh, the first one was Robert Woods as the lead. This one, Fernando takes the lead. Uh, Red, Luis Davila, and Carancho Sancho, after escaping from jail, reach the border to Mexico and are hired by Morton, which is Robert Woods, a rich silver mine owner. Disgusted by Morton's cruelty, especially against the local peons, the two support a revolt organized with the aid of Mrs. Vivian, Laura Donna wife of the ruthless tyrant. Sancho stars as an escaped prisoner who helps the peons who work in a silver mine overthrow their ruthless boss with the help of the man's wife. Did you say the peons? Peons. Hey, you peon. I got gold to dig. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I, don't, uh, I think I've seen that once. It's not bad. A lot of these early ones like uh, that one or the, uh, what was it? The uh, gunfight at high noon. And yep, Implacable 3. Right. Oh, you know, we skipped, Tom. We got to go back one, Tom. We, we yeah. skipped the sign of the coyote, Tom. Okay. Oh, girl, how could you? How, how could we do that? Yeah. For those I know of you who don't came. like Zorro films, Jay, but come on. I even tried, even changed the name to Coyote to disguise the fact that it's a Zorro character. But you Tom knows that I, I'm going to get a lot of fan mail that Winnetou, which I enjoy some of them. I just don't, I can't consider Winnetou. And the Alaskan Klaus Kinski movies, what are they called? White, White Fang, Fang movies, yep. <laughs> and, I, and some of these other, on the outskirts, I, Mas for some reason. Mas Mask Avengers. The Mask Avenger, the Zorro is coming to get you. <laughs> I, for some reason, that's just a separate fun film, enjoyable. I just, for some reason, can't lump it into the Six Shooter bar, lots yep. of beautiful women, blood and, and gore. I just can't separate it. In my mind, well, it's, more, it's more swashbuckler because they don't use. I mean, one-shot pistols, a lot of sword play in those films. Yeah, I, right. I'd rather see you know six shooter than a. Whoop, whoop. Yep. So, but anyway, that's just my opinion, which doesn't mean a hill of beans in this world. So let's move on, Tom. To oh, he gets back on track with uh, with the man who came to kill Tom. The man who came to kill. All right, an alcoholic doctor played by Carl Moner, followed by a bounty hunter, Luis Davila discovers the corpse of a gunman famous for his golden guns. Well, of course, the doctor assumes the other man's identity so he can hide behind it. Sancho plays Pablo Reyes. I think half his characters are last name are Reyes or Carancho, uh, a sadistic Mexican bandit who enjoys shooting unarmed people. Wow. Including women and children. I mean, this guy's ruthless. Not the women and children. He leads the gang who killed the real gunman but then believes he's still alive and goes after the doctor. Hmm. Probably yeah. because there's another guy to kill. Well, there always is. Yep. You know how, how hard it is for me not to reach over into that into the that way and just grab <laughs> the hat and put it on me and just do the whole rest of the show as Fernando Sancho. Yeah. But that's okay. Maybe you'll just move your lips, Tom, and I'll I'll do the impression. The hat doesn't be doesn't removable. Oh, it's stuck to you. <laughs> it's stuck you super glued it. That's awesome. Let's get a wait, let's get a full shot so everybody can enjoy. There we go, Tom. No, oh, forgot. Hey. <laughs> okay, that's the last impression I do. Tell I'm it. done. So let's move on to some other films that he made, Tom. Oh, did we say The Man Who Came to Kill, or did we just show that? We did. Yeah, we did. He, it. he made 100000 uh for Ringo with, with another legend in the, in the genre. Yeah, a stranger, Richard Harrison, rides into Rainbow Valley, where he's mistaken for a former resident who is Believed killed in the Civil War, he soon finds himself in opposition to the local town boss, Tom Cherry, played by Gerard Tichy, 
Who seeks to find a hundred thousand dollars stashed away by a Mexican general? Sancho plays Chuck, a shady character who the viewer never knows if he'll turn out good or bad. So, plays again both sides against the middle. And that's what he always does. Yep. So we have no problem with that. Now let's move on to uh, the next film in in the uh, over of Mr. Uh, Sancho, and that is was that the a pistol for Ringo? Any relation to uh, Tom? Uh, no. <laughs> This was this was probably his first big role that everybody realized that hey this guy's a you know Fernando Sancho he really came into his own in this movie uh, in a border town the famous gunslinger Ringo played by Juliana Gemma kills four people in self defense but is arrested nevertheless meanwhile a gang of Mexicans cross the border and rob the local bank their leader Sancho played by Fernando Sancho is wounded when they try to escape, and therefore the bandits take refuge at a nearby ranch, taking the occupants hostage. The sheriff, George Martin, is reluctant to take action because his fiance, Ruby Brown, played by Hallie Hammond, Lorella De Luca, is among the hostages. The only one who can help him now is Ringo, who is set free and asked to infiltrate the, ga- infiltrate the gang. Sancho plays Sancho, the wounded gang leader in the film that probably solidified his career as a leading actor in the genre. Probably, yeah. Probably, yep. That's the one, you know, we remember him for. And then after that, he got hired to play that role, whether it's the uh, the general or... Uh, the Mexican bandit, yeah, for the <laughs> revolutionary, yep. Right? So, I mean, that's the go-to guy. I mean, they have character actors in the States, and then they had them in the Spaghetti Westerns, and he fit the bill perfectly. Okay, then next we have the third installment of the Ringo movies, but not necessarily related, Tom. Yep, The Return of Ringo. Again, Montgomery Brown, this time Juliana Gemma, returns from the Civil War where he is presumed to have died to find his house overrun by bandits and his wife engaged to one of the the leaders, Paco Fuentes, played by George Martin again. In an attempt to discover if his wife Hallie, Hallie Hammond, has remained faithful, he dyes his hair and takes on the disguise of a mestizo peasant, gradually gaining access to his old home and learning in the process that he has a daughter who is being used by Paco as a hold on Hallie in order to make her compliant in his desire to marry her. Uh, Fernando plays Esteban Fuentes, George Martin's vicious brother. Yeah, I didn't like Gemma with the blonde hair. It, uh, yeah, it was weird. threw me off. It kind of looked like Billy Idol there. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I want more, more, really? more. So uh, let's move on. I like the film, but I don't like Gamma as, as, as blonde. But that women, you may think differently. So next on the list of his long list of films was Seven Guns for the McGregors, which was the one of the bigger hits in the spaghetti western genre, Tom. Yep. This one's sort of long. The McGregors are hardworking, hard-playing, whiskey-drinking Scottish clan with seven sons that own a house horse ranch near the border of Texas and Mexico. When it comes time to sell some of their stock, the eldest, Gregor, Robert Woods, leads his brothers and a herd of horses to the town of Las Mesas, where they expect to get a good price for the livestock. But what they find in Las Mesas is a crooked horse trader who is in league with a corrupt sheriff played by Antonio Molina Rojo, both of whom who have strong ties to the vicious bandit chief Santillana, played by Leo Anchorez. The horse dealer offers the McGregors a paltry sum for their animals and tries to force them to take his deal. This triggers a brawl for which the McGregors end up in jail. The boys manage a successful jailbreak only to discover that their horses have been stolen by the crooked dealer in Santillana. Gregor decides something must be done to break the power of this oppressive, corrupt, outlawed regime as well as get their horses back. So he goes after him with his brothers. Sancho plays Rodrigo Rodriguez, who is a lieutenant of Ankara's character. He was almost killed in a scene where he and his henchmen rob a train where he hit his head on an iron bridge after climbing to the top of the train cars. I don't know if you've got the trailer for that, uh, Jay, but you can see it in the trailer where he gets on top of this train car and almost hits his head on the top of the bridge. And apparently he he did hit it and almost decapitated himself. Wow. Yeah. So he, he can duel... Uh, with Eli Wallach, Eli over Wallach drinking, and train steps, yeah, exactly. Drink, and drink, yeah, he almost was beheaded, and he almost drank acid, or he did. That's right. So that's why we love Eli Wallach. Another future idea for another <laughs> <laughs> podcast, Tom. 
Uh, that was another surprise I was going to tell you. Perhaps a show on Eli Wallach. Yeah. So, but nothing is etched in stone yet. We have uh, other great surprise shows planned as well. Let's move along, Tom, for seven, uh, the seven uh, guns for Timothy. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I, go ahead. Scratch that. It's the two sergeants of General Custer, another, another, another Chico. winner. Yeah. yeah. During the Civil War, two Union soldiers, Franco and Ciccio, of Sicilian origin always, they are imprisoned on charges of desertion. Condemned to death, they are given a reprieve and sent to spy on the Confederates. They are kept but are captured by the Apaches and end up, because of their stupidity, they stop the haul of the whole Confederate Army. Uh, Sancho plays a minor role as Fithouse, a Union soldier trying to put up with Franco and Ciccio's antics. So he's only at the Army post. Right, I'm trying to find. I thought I, I thought for a second I had the uh, the poster. Maybe it doesn't even need one. The two sergeants of General Custer. Maybe that's the one that I forgot subconsciously, Tom, because be. it's such a winner. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, then he returned to another, I guess, classic. You can even say a top ten in in the genre, Tom, and that's in the Big Gun Down. Yeah, a lot of times we forget that he's in this movie, but. Uh... Jonathan Corbett, played by Lee Van Cleef, a bounty hunter, is assigned to follow Cuchillo, Tomas Melian, who has allegedly committed a rape. A rich landowner encourages Corbett, who hopes to help Corbett run for senator once he has succeeded in his quest. Corbett embarks on a manhunt through Texas and Mexico, staying on Cuchillo's trail. During the course of the deadly hunt, Corbett's doubts about the manhunt grow. When the landowner shows up in Mexico to put an end to the business, the landowner confirms Corbett's suspicion. Something is amiss, and only a showdown will suffice when everything comes to light. Sancho plays Captain Segura, a Mexican soldier who captures both Cuchillo and Corbett and imprisons them in jail. Cuchillo escapes, and Corbett is set free after his credentials are checked out. So he's got some, some good lines in it, but he's only in it in the uh, about three-quarters of the way through the film. Yeah. You do forget it because these two, because Van Cleef and Milan still steal yep, the show. dominate the, the action, yep. Right. Okay, then right after the big gun down, uh, let's see what we got. As uh, a slew of films here, I'm sure all of you are looking with us, is Django Shoot First, a minor Django film. Great opening uh, uh, song right. with Bolero, and then it sort of goes downhill, but uh, can't, can't make up his mind whether it wants to be a, a drama, drama or a comedy like a lot of them. Django, played by Glenn Saxon, recovers his father's dead body from a bounty hunter whom he has dispatched, and instead of burying him, decides to collect the reward himself. On his arrival in town, however, he learns that his father wasn't a criminal, but a businessman, framed by his former partner, compelling him to stay and avenge his father and try to claim his rightful inheritance. Uh, Sancho plays Gordon Watch, another name he's known by in a couple of the films, his last name is Watch. He becomes Saxon's sidekick and helps him solve the murder of his father as inheritance of the local bank. Yeah. Uh, as I said, the song is what makes the film, and then it's just a minor uh, you know, film in the genre. So Sancho Tom, plays a character like Pedro Sanchez does for Sabata. Oh, He's, okay. You know, he helps him do this or that and watches out what's going on and, and stuff like that. Yeah, he does. And uh, another great role, as I said, subsequently from that time, he gets those roles that now he is meant for as opposed to let's just hire anybody. Yeah. Uh, like, like, in, in, like, like even in Hollywood until you become almost like a cult star. Oh, that's a good question, Tom. Do you think he was when he was making this? Oh, sure. I, I believe he was. I, I think mean, people would say, oh, you know, like we would say uh, so-and-so is in this movie, uh, L.Q. Jones or somebody like that. They would say, oh, Fernando Sancho's in this. I didn't think the movie was that good, but I, I'm going to go see it because Fernando's in it, you know. Right. No, I, I, I totally agree. So, Tom, we're at another time for a montage um, of another uh I guess, clips from um, Fernando's career and put to music, of course, because we like to pay homage. So when we talk about the, the man or the person, you got to see a little bit of their work. So here is another uh, tribute to Fernando. He was one of those actors that whatever scene he was in, he dominated the scene. 
Oh, he absolutely. may not have been the leading actor. Oops. He may have been a cameo part, but when he was on screen, he dominated that scene. You just watched him. Okay. Sorry about that, folks. You're fired. <laughs> Whoever put that on the screen. So uh, I want to say, uh, I guess, a hi to everybody once again who are joining us. West Coast, what is it, about uh, 1238? So I mean, st- yeah, now we're making good time. Wow. Look, we only got 55 more to go. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that means it's a 338 in the East Coast. And that means it is 938 p.m. In, yep. in Europe and in the UK, it's 838. So it's, I'm doing my best DJ voice. So that's Tom Betts, uh, Spaghetti Western historian. I'm Jay Jennings. And uh, I just want to say thank you for all the, the letters. Yeah, letters with postage. Emails and private messages and whatever you want to call it, horseback. And they all come here and they say how much they enjoy the, our show. And we keep it live and funny and uh, interesting. Because this is uh, hopefully 20, 30 episodes from now. We say knock on wood, Tom. Uh, it'll be a nice little run here so far. Right, an idea we'll be, that should have. We'll be walking by then, or crawling by. Well, I'll be in my I'll be in, in my <laughs> Doctor Strange Love um, wheelchair. So let's move right along with the films of Fernando Sancho and uh, stepping in at number seventeen. No, I don't know what number it is, but it is. Uh, where is it, Tom? It is. Is it uh, Dynamite, Dynamite Jim? Jim. Okay, Dynamite Tom? Jim. Dynamite Jim, played by Luis Davila, is a northern spy ordered to smuggle Mexican gold through rebel territory to an Iowa fort. Jim's journey includes betrayal by a greedy cohort, Sancho, of course, a showdown with an evil bandit, Aldo Sambrell, another favorite, and other standard encounters and double crosses. Sancho plays Pablo Reyes. See, there's that Reyes again. Again. Mexican bandit interested in obtaining the gold. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> yeah, I like the poster. Uh, it's a good film. It's basically one of the parts that he's born to play, as well as others, of course. I mean, in that, in that genre, that's who you'd get. If I was around and a director in that era, I'd get him for every film that I possibly could. So moving right along, Tom, to the next uh, Sancho classic is, oh, The Man from Nowhere. Isn't that also Arizona Colt? Arizona Colt, yep. Arizona Colt, played by Juliana Gemma, a notorious bounty hunter, is imprisoned in a desert town, is freed by Mexican gang leader Gordon Watch. There's that, that last name, Watch. Fernando Sancho, instead of galloping off into the sunset, Arizona elects to stay in town to defend its citizens from the film's real bad guys, Watch's gang. Sancho plays Gordon Watch, a Mexican bandit who frees his gang from a prison, and then terrorize the local town and its citizens. There it is. Once yep. again, there he is showing off his gun skills. Right, Tom? That's it. <laughs> it's a good <laughs> film, actually. Yeah. It's probably... It's, it's probably like a Gemma. Ringo film. Yep. It's probably Gemma's best film, in my opinion. Straightforward. He's a gunfighter. Everything after that, I think he just plays a character, a character of... Uh, Same. Yeah, but I mean, that's what he was likable for, was playing himself. The, yeah, you know, right. I always said he was the Richie Cunningham yeah. of, uh, even though Peter Lee Lawrence looked like Richie Cunningham, yeah. his roles were not. His roles were that of Nick Adams, tough, psycho. Chris Jones from the, those AIP movies kind of had a rugged rock and roll rock star look as opposed to Gemma, who's more, how you doing? He's like... <laughs> Kind of like Goofy from you know the Disney World, but anyway, I'm just I'm just playing around. Well, he he was such a great athlete. I mean, a lot of a lot of us watch it just to see the athleticism of his uh, jumping out of trees on the. Oh, of course. Uh, I mean, he was a fantastic athlete. So, right as I said, there are different kind of uh, action stars. He, he yep. to me was very low key. Had a couple good fight scenes, and then he went and dyed his hair blonde. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, let's move right along. We'll have a Gemma show, Tom. There we go. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that'll, that'll be a good show. Coming up next on the big podcast, we move on to, oh, $7 to kill or $7. On the red. Okay. 
Uh, Sancho's in this one is sort of like um, he is in um, ten thousand dollars for a massacre. His father, father figure. Mm-hmm. Um, when Johnny Ashley, Anthony Stephan is away from home, his ranch is attacked by the bandit El Chacal, Sancho. His wife is killed and his son Jerry, played by Jerry Wilson, is kidnapped by the bandit. After a quest of no less than 15 years, Ashley finds the man who has ruined his life, but by then his son has become a ruthless bandit in imitation of his foster parent. The final confrontation between a father and his long-lost son is very dramatic and gripping. It is one of the best. Um, Sancho plays El Chacal or Jack Wilson in some versions, a ruthless bandit who steals Jerry and raises him as his own son since his wife cannot bear him children. He teaches his son how to be as ruthless as he is, and that's exactly how he turns out. Wow. Yeah, Yeah, it's a good one. Uh, One of uh, Sancho's better roles. And they actually continued in the next, I'm looking at his list of films, maybe 10, 15 in a row without another, you know, beans, tacos, and and hot dogs. (laughs) Yeah, he gets some, some good dramatic roles here. Right, so we got Seven Guns for Timothy, which is okay as a film, but he, of course, stands out in every time he's up on the screen. Yeah, I've lost that one, Jay. I'll, I remember about, I'll remember from memory, Timothy is played by Sean Flynn, um, a greenhorn, and, of course, his ranch is threatened, so he goes out and hires these uh, gunfighters like the Magnificent Seven who uh, teach him how to fight and be a gunfighter and stand up for him and defeat the bad guys. And oh, Sancho, yeah. and the, Sancho plays the leader of the seven. Oh, yeah, it's his magnificent seven, Tom. Yep. So, he's the Chris no. he's the Chris character, yep. Right. It's not No, is that my <laughs> just kidding, Tom. You still hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Okay, I thought I heard my myself go out. Nope. So uh it happened early, folks, in case you missed it on uh <laughs> since episode three. Podcast three, I've been, my mic goes out. We never know when. We all take no one bets. Won, no one won that side bet. They always go 45, 50 minutes. Right. right. This was three minutes in. So I'm, <laughs> glad, we, I'm glad we got, got it over, over with. with. So let's move on to the next film, Tom. Uh, and that is A Taste for killing. killing. Yep. Lanky fellow, Craig Hill, observes valuable transports or, of money or gold. But when they are robbed, he doesn't intervene. He follows the robbers and then brings the loot back to collect the insurance. When his job brings him in conflict with the notorious outlaw Gus Kennebec, George Martin, he has personal reasons to protect the money as Kennebec was once responsible for the death of Lanky's brother. Sancho plays Sanchez, the robbers of a bank transfer in the opening scene of the film. He's killed by Lanky fellow who returns the money to the bank. So Fernando's only in the first 20 minutes of the film. Right. Yeah, it's still not bad. Uh, first of all, it's one of... Um, Craig Hill's best. I mean, geez, he just... It's so cool in the way it's shot, him on the yeah. horse aiming down at people, and then Telescopic he's, lens, and he, he can't... And it, you know, he can't read. That's that's the funny part, too. He's, he's illiterate, basically, but he earns his money by having people read wanted posters and looking at the pictures and then going after the outlaws. Right, because this at one point this film was called as the dyslexic gunslinger. <laughs> so I'm glad they changed the uh, the title. Great film, by the way. So let's move on to the next one, Tom. And it's is it Clint the Loner or Clint the Stranger? Yeah, both titles. Um, okay. It's sort of a, a remake of Shane. Clint, played by George Martin, a famous gunfighter, just wants to reunite and settle down with his family, but instead becomes involved in a range war. Uh, Sancho plays Ross, a local rancher who joins with Walter Shannon, played by Walter Barnes, who's driving all the homesteaders out of the valley to take over their land for the bigger ranchers. Now look, look at him back there with his hand. He looks like William Conrad, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a great poster. That's a good. I've never seen that poster before. That was really good. Yeah, that's a good one. And next, moving on, we have one of the greatest titles in spaghetti western history, Tom, a Hate for Hate. Yeah, we've talked about this, I think, ev- almost every episode. Ad finitum, ad nauseum. Yeah. Bank robber Jim Cooper, John Ireland, has trouble with his murderous partner, Moxon, played by Mirko Ellis, during a job. After their fallout, Cooper is caught and jailed for life, but not before he has met and befriended Miguel, played by Antonio Sabato, 
a Mexican gold miner and would-be artist who promises to get Cooper's family to safety across the border. However, Moxon has kidnapped the family and made off with all the cash. Eventually, Cooper breaks out of prison and thinking that Miguel, Miguel has double-crossed him goes after his revenge. And finding out his mistake, the two team up and face Moxon in a final, sh final showdown. Sancho plays Coyote, a one-legged man who hires Miguel so he can make money and go to New York and become an artist. Mm. <laughs> sort of the, uh, uh, I'm trying to think, the uh, Australian Western. Kirk Douglas plays the uh, one-legged hermit. Uh, Life Among the Trees? <laughs> uh, uh, someone will pop up with it in the comments section. Oh, man. Or the uh, big Australian, trees. Australian Western, yeah. They made a series out of it on TV, and it's all about horses. Man, Come on, sorry about that outburst. Yeah, they'll, they'll, I don't see anybody coming up with an answer. Okay, that's fine. You're not, supposed to, <laughs> you're not supposed to look, Tom. Anyway, so our next film in the Sancho Over of Films is... Oh, Killer Kid, another favorite of yours, Tom. Killer Kid, yeah, it's one of good, Anthony Steffen's better. Westerns. Uh, Captain Morris and Anthony Stephan crosses the border into Mexico disguised as the famous killer kid to stop a gun running operation for revolutionary forces. He falls in love with Mercedes Hernandez, plays by Liz Barrett, the daughter of the wise guerrilla leader El Santo, played by Howard Nelson Rubian, and begins to understand the ideals that guide the rebels in their fight against the cruelty and corruption of the government's men. Sancho plays Villar, the right-hand man of El Santo, one of his best roles as he shows all his sides of his character, from vicious to sympathetic, and Fernando is able to show how good an actor he really is. Man from Snowy River, thank you, Roy, was the movie I was it's trying to The Man to from Snowy River! Yeah, there you go. Kirk Douglas okay. plays a, plays a one-legged pirate in there. Tom, I'm going to put my money in my leg. <laughs> Unbelievable. Not bad, huh, Tom? Old man still go. got some pipes. That's Ooh. right. <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Roy. Okay. Yeah, thank you. And next we have Tom's. Tom has two favorite films. And if you don't know what they are, then you, sh you shouldn't watch this show. And, and Jay bases all of our shows on one or the other of these movies I sneak up the I sneak in one or the other in. Yeah, correct. And of course we're talking about Matalo or Little Rita from the West. Yeah, this one's Little Rita, played by Rita Pavone, is out to rid the West of evil bandits. She is helped by her friend and Indian chief, Sitting Buffalo or Silly Bull, played by Gordon Mitchell, who agrees with her that gold is the source of all human evil. As Crazy Westerners, another alternate title, the songs have been removed in a place as a more serious Western. That's the one to watch. Oh, yeah. San Sancho plays Sancho or Pancho Villa, a parody of the real-life Mexican revolutionary. Right. Of course, you got to put Django in the background. Yeah, Django's in there. Terrence Hill's in there. I mean, a lot of uh, the sp uh, spaghetti Western actors are in there playing bit parts. Well, don't get me wrong. I actually thought if they would have got a more hipper more glamorous girl to yeah, play yeah. Rita. Yeah, or, her voice you know, some... is very irritating for me. I'm sorry. Right. Like yeah. Eth Ethel Merman. Like, I'd, r I'd rather have Carol Ellis from The Bugaloos. There you go, yeah. Remember her? The mm -hmm. Bugaloos. Her as Little Rita. Great casting, by the way. Okay, let's move right along. We gave that film way too much time. <laughs> yes. And uh, next actually comes back to one of my personal favorites, A Man and a Colt. Yep, that's, a, that's a one of those little classic gems. Not too many people right. talk about it. But Dakota Joe, played by Robert Hundar, takes a job as a hired gun for Don Carlos, but quits after he can no longer tolerate the cruelty toward a young couple whom he has befriended. He hatches a plan to get even with the ruthless landowner by teaming with a bandit and stealing all of Don Carlos's money. Sancho plays Pedro, a former outlaw, now gone straight and working for Don Carlos, who still has the soul of a thief he can't overcome. Oh. Yeah. Actually, it's a great little art film. It's like kind of, it's simple, and uh, those kind of gems, you're right, come along. Yeah, he plays a sympathetic outlaw. It's like he's torn. He can't, he wants to go straight, but he can't. He's just addicted to stealing. Kind of like a... Uh, what is it? The colt, the rope, and the colt, or uh, yeah, very similar, at least in my opinion. All right, Tom, let's move right along to the next film here in our three-hour Fernando Sancho marathon, 
And we're only actually we're still under an hour, Tom. I know, unbelievable. We only got not crazy. Go. Yeah. Well, all of you were actually going to be able to go out and do something after the show. <laughs> Watch the so, comment. Yeah. Right. Uh, then comes I think this is the first Sartana movie. If you meet Sartana, pray for death. Yeah. We call it Sartana or Gunfighters Die Harder over here, but okay. Uh, several town officials, among them the bank director, organize a bank robbery to swindle the insurance company. They hire a Mexican gang to steal a strong box and an American gang led by Lasky, which is William Berger, to kill the Mexicans. A mysterious stranger, Sartana, played by Johnny Garco, invites himself into the middle of the conflict, revolving around rival gangs, the town's bigwigs, and the search for the missing loot. Sancho plays Tampico, the Mexican bandit who's hired by the town banker to rob the strong box, and then he's bumped off by William Berger, or Berger. Right. And don't forget Sidney Chaplin. Sidney Chaplin, yes. Charlie's son. Great poster, iconic. I've, I've got a few of those in different countries. So let's move on to our next Sancho classic, Tom. And it is, of course it's a classic. This it's mentioned almost on... On every show, ten thousand yeah. dollars for a mas- for a mascara. <laughs> this makes up for little Rita. Uh, right. Django, played by Johnny Garco, has become a bounty hunter who is asked to chase down Manuel Cortez, played by Claudio Camasso, who has kidnapped Dolores Mendoza, played by Andriana Ambessi. But because he is not offered enough money, he decides to join forces with the bandit. Manuel double crosses him and kills Mijanu. Uh, Laura Donanusiak, who is about to, who he's about to marry. Once again, Django will have to take revenge. Uh, Sancho plays Stardust, Vasquez, the father of Manuel, in one of his best roles. He's an over-the-hill outlaw who has raised his son to follow in his footsteps and then must pay the price when Django comes after him for the bounty on his head. Uh, other than what we're talking about here, this has one of my favorite scenes in all of Spaghetti Westerns, when the stagecoach is held up and robbed, Garko is left behind by a, a rock slide, which is contrived by Camasso to AC him out of the, 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 the loot. So when, when Django, or played by Garko, finally gets through and gets to the stagecoach robbery, he goes up to the coach, and inside is Mijanu, played by Laura Donanusiak. She's dead. And there's like a two-minute scene of just his facial expressions looking at her because he was supposed to go with her and turned her down so he could participate in the robbery, and now the robbery has resulted in her death. But it's just a very heart-rendering uh, bit of film. Oh, yeah, it's a top three in, of all time as, as far as filmmaking goes and, and just, in my opinion, story and yep. art direction and just... A little bit too much on the mascara, as I always make a joke <laughs> of. But take that aside. It's just brilliant filmmaking. Tom, once again, by uh, popular demand, it's time for another montage celebration of the, the guy we're talking about, Mr. Fernando Sancho. Have I shown two already, Tom? Shown two. Okay, let's get to montage number three of our man of the, of the hour, Mr. Fernando Sancho. What's funny, Jay, another, is when you see classic. him later in the spy films or some of the horror films, and he hasn't got the Mexican outfit on, um, a lot of times he's even clean-shaven. Instead of looking like the tough Mexican band, he looks like a real sap. And I mean, you're, so, you're, when you first see him, you go, I can't believe that's Fernando Sancho. No, sometimes he, uh, he looks really good, and other times he... Uh, you know, he just looks yep. like, you know, didn't just show up <laughs> looking like a slob. <laughs> yeah, where he fits where he fits the bill in the Mex- in the westerns, he doesn't fit the bill sometimes in the uh, spy films. Right. Sometimes yeah, a little bit. It depends if his hair is slicked back and he's yeah. got a goatee. Yep. You can make evil. I mean, look at Ross Martin in, in The Great Race. That's true. Uh, what a shock. There was Artemis Gordon as the bad guy. <laughs> yeah. You know. So anyway, so a little reference here and there. Uh, let's take a look, get back to the films of Fernando Sancho, and next on this list is another that is in destiny, has probably, it's a top three or four, if folks know I like to put stuff in top three, four categories, 
two greatest titles for a spaghetti western film in one film. Yeah. And that is, of course, uh, Turn, I'll Kill You, or If One Is Born a Swine. <laughs> Yeah, you gang can't go Mexican wrong with bandas. either one, Tom. Yeah, fantastic. A gang of Mexican bandits led by El Bicho, which means the bug, which is Sancho, are working for the local land baron, Conrado San Martin, and make trouble for Sam Wilson, played by Spartaco Conversi, the owner of a gold mine, and his daughter Susan, played by Eleonora Bianchi, when a mysterious gunfighter named Winchester Bill Walsh, played by Richard Wyler, comes to the miner's aid. Sancho plays El Bicho, the bug, Mexican gang leader. The f film is a lower tier film, but Sancho's performance alone makes it worthwhile. This is the one I told you in the beginning. They massacre all these people shown here. And there's two kids left that are probably pre teenagers. I'm sure the perhaps the Frito Bandito yep. was was based on Fernando Sancho. You never know. Never know. Get get his Sancho money. Get him that estate the money from those old commercials, Tom. Hmm. Anyway, let's move right along. That's it. I rarely one once every nine shows do I get into the, today's news. Back to the topic at hand is vengeance is mine, which. You can make your own conclusions if it has anything to do with $10,000 for a massacre. Is it its own film, the same characters, this hold on, the same crew, people yeah. who weren't working on it, did it. You, you can choose if you want it to be a sequel or an update, or you can make it two separate films. You're free to choose, Tom. It's, it's almost like Adios uh, Sabata. Um, it's, is, it, is it part of the trio or is it not? Whatever. Um, I, I'm, I get both references when I was looking at the comments last time. But uh, Bounty Hunter, John, Johnny Forrest, Johnny Garco, uh, Deserter turned outlaw, Clint Forrest, played by Claudio Camasso, are half-brothers. The one thing they have in common is their shared hatred of each other, which reaches back to their family heritage. Johnny was in prison for fil falsely being accused by Clint for the killing of their father. When Clint steals $50,000 in gold from the army, he puts Johnny and a gang of bandits who were after the gold on his tail. Sancho plays Gonzalez, the Mexican gang leader, pursuing Clint for taking the gold he had planned on stealing for himself. Yeah, I think your backdrop just widened, Tom. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Town's getting smaller. It this is. Either that or your, or your refrigerator is getting bigger, Tom. <laughs> anyway, no, just... Um, I think your son may have got, forgot the pickle with yeah. his sandwich. Mike's fixing another peanut butter sandwich. Go ahead. Okay. So anyway, let's move right along on the films of Fernando Sancho. I'm seeing a lot of good ones and, and bad ones here. Wanted Johnny, Texas, Tom. Yeah, this is sort of a, I don't know if you want to call it rare, but it's not t talked about too much. Uh, Johnny, Texas, Willie Colombini as James Newman. That's the uh, name he used. Uh, is hired by the U.S. Army to find a safe passage for a wagon train and a group of settlers to the west. Johnny decides to pay off the outlaw gang led by psycho outlaw O'Connor, Howard Ross. When that doesn't work, Colonel Stewart, played by Fernando Sancho, orders Johnny to attack a fortress and detonate a secret stash of dynamite. Sancho plays a Texas Ranger colonel. As you can see, he's clean shaven here. Doesn't look like the Mexican bandit at all. Right. who saves Johnny Texas from the gallows and assigns him the task of apprehending Madman O'Connor and getting the settlers through. A small role, but he delivers plenty of bluster. It's not a bad role. It's actually good that he gets to play uh, 
a more likable yeah, character, right? Now, here's another film, Tom, based on the gangs we have in L.A. called Blood Calls to Blood. <laughs> yeah, another uh, lower tier uh, spaghetti western. Sancho Rodriguez, played by Fernando Sancho, and his gang assault a monastery, kill some monks who try to oppose them, and get away with a golden tiara covered with diamonds. Andrew, played by Stephen Forsyth, also with an eye on the treasure, informed of his brother's death, who is seeking sanctuary, starts a search for the gang and the diamonds. Sancho's character, Sancho Rodriguez, is the leader of the ruthless gang of outlaws and the prey of Andre for the murder of his brother. He's ruthless and has no scruples, killing monks or even his own men. That is ruthless with no scruples, Tom. Sounds like Kinski last week. All right. Which was a great show. Yeah. So let's move right along uh, to one of the top films in the spaghetti western genre. I think you'll all agree with me. Chicho forgives. I don't. Is this the third one? The third, third fourth. One? By Chichio this time, I don't think I've made it into five minutes of one of those films, Tom. <laughs> yeah. They're small time horse thieves who get involved with the bandit El Diablo, which is Fernando Sancho, and two former members of his gang who are after the gold he stole from the army. Fortunately, two pretty sharp shooting saloon girls, Betty, played by Rosella Bergamonti, and Calamity Jane by Yia Sandri, come to the bumbling duo's rescue. Sancho plays El Diablo or El Pantera, who robs the gold from the army, disguises it as a golden chariot. He pretends to be dead to throw the two former members of his gang off the, the trail, and later on he surfaces and he and the two thieves face Franco and Chichio. That is can't miss wow. entertainment, Tom. Really? <laughs> is that right up there with uh, with an old Martin and Lewis movie, or <laughs> or is that? You gotta is go that look too... that one up right when we're done on YouTube and watch that one, Jay. Right. No, I'll, I'll pass, Tom. Okay. So coming uh, up next here, we have another one, Requiem for a Gringo, Tom. Yeah, we've talked about this one a couple of times. Uh, Ross Logan, played by Lang Jeffries, returns to his home only to set off a conflict with Carranza, which is uh, Fernando Sancho and his gang, which had just crossed the Mexican border and has occupied a nearby hacienda. After his brother is killed, he plans a cold-blooded revenge for which he separates the gang's most dangerous members by using their individual weakness point weak, or weak points and the animosity breeding amongst them the time tom, for the final tom, conference tom yeah. look up that's one of my favorite posters oh, yeah. <laughs> I, now i can't look down yeah go ahead anyways the time for the final confrontation is set by the astronomically interested logan amidst an eclipse of the sun Sancho plays Porfirio Carranza, a ruthless bandit and the leader of a gang of cutthroats who kill Ross Logan's brother, setting off his desire for revenge. Yeah, well, you'd, go, you'd get your, off, your desire for revenge for that broad, too, Tom. Yeah. Put it back up. Nothing, nothing wrong with <laughs> Once it's gone, it's gone, Tom. Oh, okay. Anyway, so uh, moving right on, some other great titles that go for broke, but I like to refer to it as All Out, Tom. All Out. Oh, wow. An Indian called Copperface is suspected to have stolen a large quantity of gold from a bandit who robbed the bank of El Paso. Johnny, played by Mark Damon, and Owl, played by John Ireland, join forces to get the gold and then turn on each other instead of sharing the spoils. Sancho is Carrancha. There he is, Carrancha again, a Mexican bank robber who leads a gang of outlaws. You know, Tom, I just noticed you have your sombrero tied. I have a tune. It's, it's in case my the wind comes on and blows it off. <laughs> so anyway, that's, All Out is one of my favorites. Kind of a companion, John Ireland companion piece. You can watch that a double bill with Hate for Hate, Tom. Hate for Hate, yep. Yeah, kind of the same character, different name. Another one, Tom, uh, is one of the best uh, titles for a Spaghetti Western, The Wrath of God. Yeah, we talked about this last week with Brett Halsey, so I you did. Want, want to uh, get into this a little more, go back to last week's episode and listen. Uh, but Brett plays a character named Fred Leinster, an alcoholic ex-sheriff. He's paid to collect a ransom for the kidnapping of a young boy. When he finds out the particulars of the crime, he turns the tables on the outlaws. In other words, he sobers up, rescues the boy and the ransom, and takes it back to 
the boy's mother. Sancho plays Manuel, the head of the kidnappers, in a much subdued role. He doesn't uh, do a lot of flailing and blustering and stuff. He plays pretty serious role in this. Yeah. Thing. I'm sure when he gets the script to these ones, he's, he doesn't have to do much, just brush, comb his mustache a few times and, and collect that paycheck. There's nothing wrong with that. That's what acting is. Sometimes they're offered, well, like these gals. We did that three-hour, two-show extravaganza on Spaghetti Western Actresses. Oh, yeah. And uh, some, they were pro in some films, they were prominently f uh, featured as the love interest. And other times, they were just in the background as a barmaid. It just... But they didn't mind. They knew one film they'd be featured, and the next they'd be the third girlfriend in the back. Sure, it's stagecoach passengers. Right. I don't think you'd. I don't think you'd see that in American movies. I think once you wouldn't see Anne Margaret like as a featured extra. You know, after making you know uh, uh, one of her great films. So anyway, uh, yeah, she makes an El an Elvis movie, and the next thing you know, she's got like. You see her dancing in the background of a shindig episode. Right. So it's not like, but in the but in Italian cinema, the females, the, you know, whatever they were, age 19 to maybe 30, and they put hair up or down, you know, the barmaid outfit or something. And, and they were strong. They all had kind of the husky voice and they were all strong women. Well, it's, so I it's guess ama it, it's amazing. And, and look at some of them, how long their careers were. It wasn't like they did it for two or three years and never progressed beyond those right. roles. They did it for a decade. So like you said, they knew what they were getting into, and they liked playing those various parts. Some were big, some were small, but it was a steady income. I don't know how I went from Sancho taking bigger roles and smaller roles into then juxtaposing into spaghetti western actresses. <laughs> anyway, I've always got my mind on those actresses, Tom. There you go. Uh, especially Claudia Cardinal, who we've put, the, the, I've sent five emails. Miss Cardinal, we love you. Please come do the show. And she writes back, Jay who? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's move to our next Fernando Sancho movie. And um, it's actually not bad. Where are we? Here we are. It's uh, I'll Forgive You Before I'll Kill You. And what makes that special, Tom, is that bum, 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 kind of like the... Uh, Turn, I'll kill you. Like, yeah, like a king, like right. But I was going to say, kind of like the game show where the balloons come oh, down. Yeah. This is the one where we have the one lone trailer uh, for this film. Uh, we'll show it first, and then we'll talk about it. So, out of all the films, Tom, we had a we all all the employees here, all four of us here in Almeria, we took a, a, an old derby and we drew straws, and we decided whatever title we put in. All the titles for all his movies, and I drew the largest straw, and this is the film that I wanted to see. So uh, I'll forgive you before I kill you. And if actually, the reason this was picked honestly is because it has the most footage of, of Sancho in almost any trailer he's ever been. And since this is his day, we thought he should, he should shine. So here we go, and then Tom will talk all about it once we get back. You'll run like a rabbit. Don't fire, Sawyer. I've no bullets. You'll never shoot with this hand again, Wayne. Your whole elbow is shattered. I was afraid I might lose. Danny, your father was the fastest gun in the state of Texas. Yeah, I guess I was dead wrong about you. Wayne never knew what fear was. A man can go on living without being the top gun in Texas. Which one of you is going to Marfa to testify against Tony Stevens? <laughs> I don't send men to the gallows. Bad, I don't tell you. Uh, Jeremy Foster, they call me. I don't know nothing. But I'm not the person you want. And my aunt's not that person either. On your feet. Not about to. Caramba. Aren't you a hero to speak to me so brave? Caramba. A hero Caramba. speaks to me so brave. 
So no, that voice, I think someone was asking, that is his voice, is it not? I don't think he spoke English or very little. Oh, that's right, Tom. Duh. Yeah. Well, okay, what I meant was, I'm not that dumb. Maybe that's the dub voice that oh, the we dub remember. Voice we hear all the time. Yeah, Mel Wells. Yeah, could be. I just, I just said that wrong. Yeah. <laughs> of course, it wasn't him. Oh, I'm here for the. I'm here for my dubbing. Yeah. yeah of course. Well, okay. I, and I don't know if how many uh, he, he did dubbing early on in his career. When I, when I say that fifties, um, if you look up on the database, the Spanish database, you won't see him do his own films. He was so busy doing films that he had to have. Even a Spanish actor dub his, his films in, in Spain. Right. No, I was just, uh, that's the voice we know, like a lot of those Italian sword and sorcery for Hercules. And for, yeah. uh, yep. it's always the same three or four actors whose voices you recognize. And I think it's one, one voice actor, female voice actress, who does, <laughs> who does everybody. Oh. You know, she'll do the queen and... Uh, whatever. Yeah, I'm uh -huh. thinking of Thief of Baghdad with Steve Reeves has like the greatest usage of voices. It's like, ugh. oh, we went, we went way over this week. I don't think anybody won this week either. How are we now, there we Tom? Go. You're good, good. Twice in one show, Tom. We broke a record. <laughs> I thought anyway. we were get away with it. After almost, the, uh, almost had it, almost yeah. had it. Okay, let's, let's move. Let's, Let's talk about this one real quick. Go ahead. Stagecoach of the Condemned is the other title. And Anthony Stevens, Bruno Corazari, and his gang are in jail awaiting trial. They hire Leon Pompero, which is Fernando Sancho, and his gang to kill the only witness that can testify against him. But then they take all the passengers of a stagecoach hostage because they don't know who the witness is. All right. In the stage stop run by Wayne Sonier, is Rich, played by Richard Harrison, uh, because they're unsure of which of them is actually the witness. Um, Richard Harrison is this ex-gunfighter that's promised his wife, of course, that he'll never touch a gun again. And so he goes through all types of uh, brutality against him and be called a chicken and everything else until the very end when he's forced to pick up his gun and kill them all. Anyway, Sancho is Leo Pomparo, the head of the gang, who's taking the passengers hostage. He awards himself a medal for every six men he kills. Which is a little bit different. A little bit different. Wow, no, it is a little bit different. I think because I showed the trailer, uh, I guess I omitted the poster. So sorry for all you people who wanted to see that poster. It happens. Anyway, let's move right along. I'll, or if I find it, I'll pop it in later. Okay. There we go. So anyway, our next film. What's this, Tom? Those are the posters. The Italian and the Spanish. You know what? I, I'm glad you did that. Thank you. So we, we did not omit them. Nope. So next one we're going to go is, uh, it's another Chicho film. It's called Chicho's Here, Take a Seat. Uh, anyway, <laughs> our next film is another kind of, uh, what do you say, comedy, Tom, in the boldest job in the West, Tom? That, that's the one that the, the video cover shows Sancho sitting on a donkey in the middle of the desert. And it looks like a comedy, but it's not a comedy at all. Wow. It's okay. A, it, I haven't seen it. Yeah, it's a hidden gem, really. Uh, a bandit gang su successfully executes a complicated bank heist, but disagreement arises when they reach their hideout over the shares from the take. This is the one I mentioned before, that the, the horse goes back to town and Sancho follows it, and, of course, the, the town takes the money back, and they think uh, Sancho is a hero when he was really the guy who robbed the bank. Uh, but his, his title is El Reyes, a remorseless bandit, who has a conscience, if not a heart. He is the lead actor of the film, but starts out as just another cast member, which is a little bit, which makes the film a little bit different, too. Oh, okay. I'll have to go check that out. Yep, it's a good one. It's a winter uh, film. It takes place in the mountains in the snow. Oh, uh, oh, it's a snow film. Yeah, it's snow film. You know I like those snow films. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, you know what that means. So let's uh, move right along, Tom, to another fan favorite i've been trying to look for it for the last two minutes and maybe it'll it'll show up oh, okay here it is is that the uh oh and the crows will dig your grave yeah. oh excellent i found yeah. it i got a okay. hundred posters here in my database folks so bear with me tell us about this film tom oh, he looks on. like look look tom he looks like john belushi yeah he does look at that guy star on his chest mm-hmm 
Uh, Wells Fargo hires bounty hunters to protect its gold transports from the notorious outlaw Glenn Kovacs, played by Frank Branna. Jeff Sullivan, played by Craig Hill, one of the hired gunmen, buys the freedom of Dan Barker, played by Angel Aranda, a prisoner who may lead him to Kovacs. When Barker escapes from Sullivan, the other bounty hunters pursue him also, leading to the ultimate showdown between all the parties. Sancho plays Pancho Corrales, another deputized crow who leads his own gang after Kovacs, but has less scruples than Sullivan. He catches Parker and tortures him in order to find out where Kovacs is hiding. Sullivan rescues Parker and the pair flee, but now they have Corrales and his thugs on their trail. Yeah, it's not bad. Um, I like the title, of course. It's another, you know, and the crows yep. will eat your skin. On the third day the crow arrives. or Right, and, you know, we will all eat crow. <laughs> another great title. Uh, moving on, actually, one of them, another of my favorite titles, and most of you don't know, I'm a title guy, poster guy, and uh, I don't know why, I just love great spaghetti western titles, is You Are a Traitor and I Will Kill You. Yep. Or Cry of Death. Oh, mm. A mysterious bounty hunter goes after a town boss who is murdering homesteaders for their land. Sancho plays Sebastian, a prospector looking for gold in a nearby mine. He's a drunkard who sobers up when his donkey is killed. He then becomes determined revenger out to kill the man who killed his loyal friend. Um, if you've ever seen this one, yeah, his best friend is a donkey. And uh, when they when they kill him, he becomes, instead of the town idiot and drunkard, he sobers up and uh, becomes a good guy. Like like most films of that nature. Yep. Yeah, there's nothing unusual about that. Don't kill my dog, you know. Don't laugh at my mule. <laughs> you know, it's all yeah. the same thing. Right. So coming up next, Tom, we have, oh, is uh, Dig Your Grave Friend, Sabat is coming. Yep. Confederate soldier named Steve McGowan, played by Richard Harrison, returns to find his father killed for his land, so he teams with a Mexican bandit, Leon Pompero, Sancho, to extract some vengeance. Sancho plays Leon Pompero, a bandit on the run, who actually turns out to be a very likable character for a change of pace. Yeah. Doesn't look like it in that poster, but... They're saying, put your hands up! <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a good film. Uh, Sancho doesn't have much to do, but... What's great about these films are, in some of the films he's in that he doesn't have much to do, they're still relatively okay, except, you know, beans, tacos, and, and a bottle of wine. That's it. So I keep getting that wrong. Kar these, what, karate fists and beans. Okay, sorry. <laughs> the next uh, film in the uh, au revoir or au revoir of, uh, of Mr. Sancho is, ooh, The Fabulous Trinity, Tom. Yeah. Sounds this like he plays a fashion designer. Yeah, really. This is a, a two set. There's two Trinity films, these fat brothers. A uh, bounty hunter named Scott, who's uh, Richard Harrison, and a Mexican Colonel Jimenez Sancho are after the wanted Trinidad brothers, Chris Huerta, Ricardo Palacios, Tito Car Garcia, who are working for their niece, Fanny Gray, smuggling guns in the United States. Sancho plays Colonel Jimenez, a Mexican colonel in this comedy western. Both of them are pretty bad. I think Richard just took this one for as a paycheck. Well, that's one of the best uh, Sancho uh, posters or his Post likeness in a poster. Yep. Right. So let's move on, Tom, to another classic, which we debated for two hours. I know we had other things to do, but I wouldn't let Tom off speakerphone if we should include Son of Zorro. Oh, God. Where or is, did I skip that? No, did I've got it here someplace. Uh, well, did I skip? Did I, am, I out of, am I out of turn? Just a minute, Tom. What do you got next? Oh, you're right. It's, uh, you wanted to make a mention about the Federal Man. Oh, Federal Man is a, another version of... You are a traitor. Call it. Pardon? Of You Are a Traitor, Tom. You Are a Traitor, right. Um, there's different versions of this thing, and depending on which one you see, one's longer than the other one. One makes sense and one doesn't, So, uh, but they're both the same film with different titles. Right. And I'm sorry, I skipped about five films. That's fine. We, uh, and always, Tom, as I always told you since the day we met many moons ago, too much gold for one gringo, Tom. There we go. That's that other one. Uh, yeah. Um, Dean Carver played by Manuel Gideon, G-U-I-T-I-A-N. 
if you say so. Is, a, is an old bandit who finally gets out of prison after his last robbery. The cellmate escapes from jail and with Trash Benson, Anthony Steffen, a gunman, saves him from the robbers who want Carver's gold. Carver agrees to divide his gold with them but dies before telling them where it's hidden. Uh, Sancho is Furman Rojas, a superstitious bandit leading a gang who want to acquire the statue of San Fermino where the gold is hidden within. They want the miraculous power of the statue to help them in their criminal activities. Wow. I think if they own a statue, they'll be untouchable. Well, yeah, great. Another classic in the genre that I think I've missed. I can't even, <laughs> I guess I forgot to upload the poster, so I'm sorry. I think I was. Uh, I, I think by now, Fernando's career has peaked, and now we're getting into some of the, uh, you know, lower tier films that he was right in. i might have been half asleep at 3 a.m <laughs> at this point but then he get he gets back on uh he gets back well too much gold for one gringo isn't bad but it's, no. it's not good by any stretch as a watch uh watch out gringo sabato will return yep a group of bandits led by the notorious luke morgan played by daniel martin steal an army strong box of gold from a stage and retreat to their hideout with a kidnapped passenger as the hostage, Carancho, played by Fernando Sancho, in turn steals it again, hides it in a grave, and the chase is on. Uh, Sancho as Carancho, a nonviolent thief who steals the strong box from Luke Morgan and leads his pursuers on a merry chase throughout the rest of the film with a series of double crosses. I like the poster. That's good. It's very kind That's of, uh, yeah. yeah. Judas, where's my money? That's basically, <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, not bad. And uh, we, as I said, I have a weird love of love hate relationship with spaghetti westerns. I may love a poster, but not dig the movie itself. Or others will have a be great classic movie, but there'll be a slew of posters that just don't cut it for me. And I'm not going to mention any names because uh, I don't. I want you to enjoy your collecting. If you're a poster collector out there, I don't want to ruin it for you. Oh, Jay said that poster sucked. Well. I'm not going to do that because in, in your eyes, what you like and what I like are completely different. I'm more dark. I like to see revolvers and blood and people getting shot. And maybe Fernando Sancho in the corner with, and a girl showing half her leg. There's something for everyone in this genre. <laughs> right. And that's why we're all glad we're all one big uh, chicken pot pie, Tom, of spaghetti go. westerns. Right. So let's move on to uh, another classic, Where the Bullets Fly, Tom. A young adventurer named Gippo, Antonio Sabato, owns one-fifth of a rock illustrating the location of a rich gold mine. We've seen a ton of these movies where there's pieces that have to be put together to find a treasure. Risking his life more than once and with the help of the beautiful hooker, Lulu Bell, that's by, by, played by Marissa Mel. Well, there's a good reason to watch this one. Our hero sets out to recover the missing pieces. Sancho plays a character named Hotshot and has a cameo playing his usual Mexican colonel general character. Right. No, it's, it's a great movie with uh, Lionel Stander. Lionel Stander. I, I'm just, Lionel just kidding, Stander, folks. Yep. He's great. And when they met, it was Moida. <laughs> Remember? Yeah, yeah. From Heart to Heart. I'm full of voices, folks, and a lot of downtime during He's these. He's full uh, of a lot of something else, too, but we can't mention that. Either. Right, and it's not, it's not hot air <laughs> balloon air. So let's move on, Tom, to another classic. Your favorite. Oh, my God. Here it is. Bum, ba, yep. bum, 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 Karate fists and beans. There we go. Uh, classic. Sam, played by Dean Reed, and Buddy, played by Chris Huerta, are two highway robbers who join with Colonel Quint, Alfredo Mayo, in order to free Baby, played by Francesca Romana Coluzzi, the banker's daughter, abducted by Espartero, which is uh, Fernando Sancho and his gang. The ragtag band meets... Uh, es Espartero in several scraps, and then a climatic confrontation. All are ugly, bad, and dirty, except Baby, and fight accordingly. Another attempt to mix spaghetti westerns and martial arts into a comedy adventure, which always fail. Espartero is a killer, played by Sancho, the leader of a gang of thugs who kidnap Baby, the banker's daughter, and hold her for ransom. Well, yeah. <laughs> 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 you don't have to say any more. Anytime they mix genres and then they make a comedy out of it, forget it. Right. Not really a, a favorite of mine, but that that's okay. I did show the poster of it just to give it a thank there you for you 
for being you. He was in it, yeah, we have to mention it. Right. Then uh, he was, again, he moved into the swashbuckling road again. Uh, didn't do much, though, but he's in it, and his scenes, he got a relish in Son of Zorro, Tom. Yep, Zorro, or Son of Zorro, played by Alberto de Aqua, aids an American gun runner, John Warren, played by William Berger, in his effort to supply arms to Mexican revolutionaries in their efforts to overthrow Emperor Maximilian. Sancho is Colonel Michel Leblanc, who heads the Maximilian forces and the foil of Zorro. So, again, he's sort of like the Sergeant Garcia character. Right. No, I, I agree. It's, it's okay, as I said. I'm not a big fan of the, of the Zorro movies, but... These are full time. of acrobatics and, you know, sword fighting and stuff like that, so... Right. Anyway, just a, a quick address real quick. Uh, I get actually one, one or two emails, private messages a week. So for everybody who's watching, that's fine. Um, why not do uh, composers? I always get. And Tom oh, yeah. and I always tell the same thing. I've been in the film and music business almost 40 years. When you use, even I'd say more than clips, because you can get away with trailers. Yeah. But when you use half a second of, of a known... Uh, now, I've done it here and there on this show, but sporadically, and then it's off. But to actually do a show dedicated to composers, where I'd have to actually play, because it would be ridiculous to do a show on composers with just titles, and Tom would talk yeah. about it, without you actually hearing different cuts from different sure. movies. In a perfect world, that would have been our first or second episode. Uh, why not? We'll just... We'll just Tom and I will shut up and we play Morricone for an hour. Nothing wrong with that, yep. except I'll get three letters of cease and desist and maybe a lawsuit from, you know, ASCAP or something. So, And he, even if you played the trailer, Jay, as you know, a lot of times the music in the trailer is not the music that was for the film. Right. You put those things together way before the film was completed to start advertising. And, and then picking some Italian or Spanish guy to sing an American accent. Yeah. His name was Tom Betts. To, to do that, I can get away with that. Mm -hmm. But I can't get away with playing the interlude from Once Upon a Time, you know? So yep. it's just, it's a simple, reasonable thing. If for those who didn't know that, uh, once and for all, I hope I nip that in the bud. We cannot do composers due to the fact that you play any type of music owned by a publishing company or the estate, and they'll come after you more than even playing video clips. Mm -hmm. So with that, I hope I solved that. Yep. Question. It's, it's as bad as a few years ago, I would say 10 years ago or so, they were looking at who owns the, the royalties and the rights to some of these Italian or European films to release them over here in the States on DVD. And again, it's just a mix mash of who owns the rights or the, someone may own this, the, the right to this, this film under this title and they own it the, under this title over here. Right. And it's just a, it's crazy. Don't want to mess with music. Nope. Music is available for purchase and download for a fee for a reason. Um, or you could go on YouTube, and that's always a gray area if you want to find a soundtrack you want. I guess it's under, it's for entertainment purposes. Then maybe yeah. they can get away with that. But on a podcast that might go somewhere someday, Tom, hint, hint. Right. Right. <laughs> Can't take any chances. <clears throat> well, we're, we're making this podcast for posterity. Not I mean, prosperity. You know, not prosperity, posterity. Right. Jay and I agreed early on that we're, we're doing this to keep this uh, for history, history purposes, that we cover these people before it's lost and get, get some of these actors and people on, on here that, uh, you know, they're, they're in their 80s now. They're right. not going to be with us for much longer. And the ones that are even younger, they don't speak English. Uh, so... We're, we're very limited on who we can get. Right. God forbid the big one comes, and we'll be lucky if a few episodes survive. You know, when they come clean up the mess in 34, 55, someone will press a button and go, I'm Jay Jennings, I'm Tom Betts. Yeah. And then they'll take the tape and go crunch. Anyway, let's move right along, Tom. We were doing so well, and I got anyway. off topic. That's all right. Anyway, uh... Oh, and then, of course, after that came uh, Karate Fists and Beans Part 2. Uh, oh, no, here's... Actually, this next film was called that before they changed it to Three Supermen of the West. Yep, Three Supermen of the West was a series of films starring um, 
uh, who I got here, George Martin, Sal Borghese, and Frank Brana. And they went through different time periods, all kinds of adventures. And this one revolves around their time machine. Uh, they, they go back in time in the Old West to recover antique treasures. And uh, they end up in the Old West and find most, the most famous treasure of the bandit. Uh, the treasures vanish when they, are, when they try to take them back to their own time. So Sancho has a small role as the director of the FBI. I, so I this kept, one is almost a mixture of old and new. Right. I kept that on because the they look like the Knights Templar, Tom. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, before they turn in, if you're an Albert de, Tor de Os Osorio fan, uh, those great movies that are creepy, another genre, we'll move on. So after this film uh, came, oh, I think it was one of the Gemma's last movies, Tom. Uh, da Dallas? Is that, am I right or I've wrong got, on I've, that? I've got Dallas. That's Anthony Stephan. Oh, sorry. My bad. I was oh. thinking of another film. Stella Dallas. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Go. Oh, Tom, it took Tom three seconds and he finally got it. No, okay. my screen went out. I pushed something and it went out and I'm okay. getting it back. So anyways, Dallas, father once lost a farm and diamond mine in a poker game to a man named Kelly. Dallas, played by Anthony Stephan and his buddy Lou, played by Fernando Sancho, arrive in Brownsville just in time for Kelly's funeral. Dallas presents Kelly's daughter, Glenda, played by Jillian Hills, who is also the sheriff's niece, a contract claiming he has the right to retrieve the farm if he wins another poker game against her. Too bad that Glenda does not know how to play poker. So now Dallas and Lou not only have to teach her the card game, but also protect her from two gangs trying to get their hands on the mine as well. This is a conglomeration of of mishmash. Yeah. Sancho co-stars as Lou McConey, a drifter and rascal who helps Dallas after he has saved his life. I love the poster. Yeah. <laughs> it's where the poster is better than the, the film. Much better. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And so let's see where we're at now. I think it could be time for our final uh, montage, Tom. Yep. So for all of you who have been patiently sitting back and Tom, between clips, likes to throw down a, a full mug of, uh, well, he's going to have his Havana, too. Good. And let's take a look at our last montage tribute to the one and only Fernando Sancho. Here we go. Lorenzo, I'm sure. Have you seen any of these clips before or on occasion? Have you seen them? What do you mean as far as clips? Have you seen some of these images before? Oh, yeah. Some of okay. them. Okay. Cool. I always, liked, I always like when I can surprise Tom with something he hasn't seen, which is if you can get something that Tom hasn't seen, like sometimes I'll mention a book and he goes, what do you mean? Because Tom has all the books. Yeah, I've got them all. The, the, the lobby cards that you had up there, I haven't seen those. Oh, okay. All righty. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing myself. I look like, I look like a, a robot here in the, in the flashing <laughs> here. Sometimes the timing gets off. Well, that was our final montage. Uh, celebrating the one and only uh, Fernando Sancho. We'll round off, I guess, the last two films, the Black Wolf films, Tom. Let's go for it. See, I got you again. More, more Zorro-type films. Ah. A young man named Carlos Acevis, played by Fernando Allende, having been trained in the fine arts of self-defense in Spain, arrives in America to find his family and their fellow and their fellow landowners persecuted by the authorities, so he decides to take up their cause as a masked swordsman. Sancho plays Corporal Donovan, a soldier in the army, and takes on the role we are familiar with of Sergeant Garcia in the Zorro films, the foil of El Coyote. Right. That's a winner. Let's move right along to the next one, Tom. That's uh, Revenge of the Black Wolf. Revenge of the Black Wolf, yes. They made two of these right, right one after the other. Unbelievable. The new California governor, Sullivan, played by Carlos Ballesteros, holds a grudge against the Black Wolf, again Fernando Allende, for injuring his hand in a previous sword duel. Using the American officer, Alvaro de Luna, who is investigating previous events as his front, he forces heavy taxes on the citizens of Monterey and confiscates the land of those who can't pay, forcing the Black Wolf to intervene. Sancho again plays Corpor Corporal Donovan, a soldier in the army, and takes on the role again of the Sergeant Garcia-type character. And then real quick, Jay, we'll just mention the last film or Western he was in was El Este de, del Oeste, a 1983 comedy. 
and uh, he basically plays one of the bandits in that. Awesome, Tom. Congratulations. It's not bad. Only an hour and a half. No, for for the Sancho part. Now we got another hour of other news and stuff. An hour of us. Okay. Yeah. So sit tight, everybody. We'll we'll sit quietly for a minute. If you want to take a bathroom break, break. I'm just kidding. I've got a bottle here that I use. You can't you can't tell. Just kidding, folks. Or am I? Anyway, so um, let's uh, let's see. What do you want to say in in conclusion of all the films that we discussed? What what can you say? He was uh, he was a different different type of uh, actor than we're used to. Like I said, he was a he was beyond uh, the normal Mexican Spanish actor that we're used to in these films. Bigger than life. Thank you for all your work, and uh, I guess you know keep making those great. Uh, play that general, that that cigar chomping general in the sky. Yeah. So uh, let's move on, Tom. I think for another. Uh, I have a, actually. I said I had a couple of surprises for Tom. Uh, Tom, uh, well, here's your first wife. Come on in. No, <laughs> just just kidding, Tom. No, basically what I wanted to say is, uh, I guess I'll talk to the crowd now. And uh, our audience, which is all over the world, Tom, it's the United Nations of fans. Uh, you could just pick a, a city or a, a country on the map or on a globe, and that's who where our fan base is. When I check YouTube, the archives, it's the dots are all over the place. Yeah. And uh, we want to thank you. different than Facebook. YouTube is still catching on. Uh, even though it's been around for 25, whatever, how many years it is, it has its own niches. And uh, the show is only nine weeks old. It should be nine years old. We should have about 300 episodes already. But, uh, well, you know, better late than ever, as they say. And I'm always honored to be here with the great Tom Betts. Well, uh, Facebook, we know a lot of the people on Facebook. So we see them in the comments section and that. We've, we're familiar with them. YouTube, there's a lot of names that are people just go on YouTube uh, and and hit and miss on podcasts and I don't recognize a lot of the people on there. Right. But they've all been positive. I mean, I haven't run into any, you know, negative things about us or the spaghetti Westerns or whatever. So no, got to be fans. Except the two old ladies who emailed me and told me to talk less. (laughs) So I'll, I'll try Mrs. Gantz. I'll try. So just to remind you when you're watching the show, it is at facebook.com slash spaghetti westerns podcast. And grain that in your brain. Look at it. Remember it every Friday in your local time zone. We're here and also uh, on YouTube. And I would be remiss if I didn't say when you're done checking out the podcast page, you want to visit facebook.com slash westerns all Italiana with some guy named Betts. So place your bets. And uh, there's always tidbits there, movie clips, weekly news. I just blink my eyes weirdly. Anyway, so uh, you don't want to miss out that. And, uh, and then in a second, I'm going to mention all the Spaghetti Western groups on Facebook that uh, we really appreciate. But Tom, uh, first and foremost, I'm going to tell you what it's time for. Here's one of our surprises, Tom. Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go, Tom. It's time for surprise... Number one, as we present... Book of the Week. <laughs> Did you like that intro, Tom? That's good, yeah. 
So I know it's quick. I think I'm going to have to extend it to 10 seconds so we can fully enjoy yeah, it. You, you can add one of the books that we do every week to the montage until it's like a stack. I, I just picked three <laughs> random bo three random books, yeah. Tom. Here, let me, let me do that just one more time for everybody who watched. It's now time for... Also, the, the Western Zolotaliana books, they're nothing to do with Western Zolotaliana. Oh, Maggie Tom, don't ruin, the, the, don't ruin it for <laughs> me. I thought you were actual, all one big happy family. Those are my actual authors. <laughs> okay. All right, well, let's, I'll go first, Tom. And uh, it's a book that I mentioned by accident. And when I showed Any Gun Can Play, uh, I, I was, I, <laughs> and a week later, I said, wasn't it great that I showed the... Uh, the Ulrich B. Bruckner book, Für ein paar Leichen mehr, which is really tough to find. It's German, it's thick, and uh, the information, the data in this, with, with not being in English, is fantastic. It's a top three book of all time in the spaghetti western genre, and uh, more about that at the end of the show. Tom, what's your book of the week? My book of the week is El Cine del Oeste. This is basically about the film shot in Madrid, not Almeria. Um, it's a fantastic book. It's by Javier Ramos, Altamira, and Angel Caldito Castellano. Now, it's in Spanish, and Javier, by accident <laughs> or foolishness, posted on Facebook today that if you buy this book in Spanish... He will send you an English translation copy via email <laughs> or Facebook. He'd sent me a copy when I bought it, and you can read the chapters and look at the pictures and then look at the uh, out pr the printout. And even though his English isn't perfect, I mean, it's like 90%. It's great. So take advantage of it. Buy a Spanish book and get the English translation. Oh, that is awesome. I'm going to have to do that, Tom. Yeah. I think it's one of the few books that I don't have. Um. But anyway, Tom, another surprise for you, Tom. Uh-oh. Here we go. Everybody yeah. sit tight. One. Why do I hear an echo in the background, Tom? I don't know. It's a surprise. Come on. Is that one. a surprise? The Here echo? we go. That's it. Here okay. we go, everybody. Countdown. Three, two, one. Well, when I when I've got very little news, you can switch the switch it over to half soldier. Anyways, I've only got two things this week. First of all, new German DVD uh, and Blu-ray release, Dilets Rex Nun Zalt du Zelps, which is Beyond the Law, a 1968 film directed by Giorgio Stegani and starring Lee Van Cleef, Antonio Sabato, Bud Spencer, Gordon Mitchell, Lionel Stander was released on Dolphin Media. I guess it's a subsidiary of Coke Media. It's a Region 2 formatted in PAL, Dolby Digital, German language only, and a running time of 85 minutes. Also includes a photo gallery, and that was released on July 16th. So go to the Spaghetti Western database, and you can go to DVD, Blu-ray, and link there. and It'll take you probably to uh, Amazon Germany, and you can order it through them. Uh, the other one I have is of a passing, not a major actor, but some of you might know him. British actor John Benfield died in Oxford, England on June 16th, 2020. He was born in Manchester, England in 1951 and appeared in 75 TV episodes and films. Started in 1981 with small parts in BBC drama adaptations such as The Winter's Tale and The Day of the Trippids. He appeared as Saragossa in an episode of the 1999 TV series the new Zorro starring Duncan Rieger. And that's all I've got for this week. And I guess Jay went to the head where he went out to get a pizza or getting a no, here I am, Tom. A beer. There you go. I just ordered a pizza and it'll be here in <laughs> 10 minutes. Looks like someone's already enjoying the brewski. Good for you, Tommy. So also it's time to, uh, I guess, say uh, thank you to all the people uh, in the you know what they say in Hollywood, all the little people who made this possible. No, not at all. All the people who are fans, 
who enjoy spaghetti westerns, who come and watch this podcast. We appreciate you. Thanks for the, the cards and letters. Keep them coming. And, and the checks. And, um, but take Tom's, take Tom's name off of the check. <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, so uh, let's give a, a shout out to all our, our friends, uh, I guess, out there who are supporting uh, the page. And we would always start with uh, the one and the only. Tom, what is it? Duh. Oh, that one. <laughs> I thought you were going to do Westerns All Italiana, but oh. I guess I'll have to take back my sponsorship. But uh -oh. the Spaghetti Western Database, that's even better than Westerns All Italiana. Oh, that's debatable. And Tom, what do you do every day? You start every I morning with a cup of day. coffee? I yep. go there every day. Cup of coffee, some Joe, a donut. Yep. Yep. I, spend, I spend about an hour every morning getting my weekly news. And even if it's stuff I already know, I read it anyway, because the more that you keep it ingrained in the old noggin, the, yeah. the better. Sebastian's um, like you. He doesn't sleep. I think he's up all night updating. <laughs> always tweaking. That's what yep, he tells always me. Always tweaking. Yep. <clears throat> so uh, I, we uh, tell everybody to go there to the Spaghetti Western database. And it's basically a film school for Spaghetti Westerns. And Tom is a professor at this film. He's right, Tom? I, I do the your bits. Yeah, he does. <laughs> you know, the guy who walks I in. Yeah. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The guy is walking in the killer like Lee Marvin walking down the. Uh, I'm Perpiro, the, the coffin maker, you know. Right, my mistake, five coffins. Yes. But um, no, what's funny, Tom, is the killer walks down the street looking for the victim. And yeah. he looks over at Tom, and Tom says, I do the old bits. Yeah, how do you spell your name? <laughs> right. so let's e? right so anyway so let's um let's also thank the rest of the people who make the show res uh responsible in the background and those are the spaghetti western uh facebook groups and where would we be without westerns mm -hmm. all italiana by mr tom betts followed by 800 spaghetti westerns once upon a time in italy the spaghetti westerns private group Spaghetti Western movie posters. Spaghetti Westerns Il Meglio del Western all Italiana. Of course, the Spaghetti Westerns Unchained group. Fan Fanatiques de Western Spaghetti. Opera Violence, the Spaghetti Western fan club. And our two friends, Hadiko Uno and Hulk Janoon, who always supply us with great videos about what we see. We thank you. And um, although Hadiki wants an extra dollar. <laughs> And I was like, okay, you've earned it. But anyway, uh, I'd like to say thank you once and for all for everybody tuning in to episode, was it nine, Tom? Number nine? Nine. Number nine. So go put on the Beatles' White Album and put on, I think, side four, song one. It's n nine minutes of number nine. And uh, we will say thank you for once again for watching us. We will give a little note next week or in the next two weeks. Uh, Tom and I, uh, we actually are going to have an author's roundtable discussion. It'd be nice if my, my live talking catches up with the feed. Anyway, uh, some, some of your favorite Spaghetti Western authors will be joining us. Not going to name any names because some of them will be last minute RSVPs. Others are checking their flights in to Almeria because we're going to have it here on a picnic table out in the middle of the street. So hopefully we'll have some authors and we'll get everybody's opinion on Spaghetti Westerns and how they decided to write their books and their take of where they're coming from. All right, for Tom Betts, I am Jay Jennings, and we always say adios, uh, amigo. Adios, right, Tom? Amigos. Yep. We'll see you next Friday at high noon on the Once Upon a Time in Spaghetti Westerns podcast. Bye. Adios, compañeros. <laughs>